morning, everyone. Good um, morning, Reverend. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, you guys getting better at that, so that's good. <laughs> good morning. And happy Mother's Day. Uh, happy you know, Mother's Day to all those mothers that are um, out there. And it's also always a uh, special day for me because uh, my mom is um, no longer in the sorority with us, and but I know that her spirit is always with all of us, with me and my incredible siblings, and so I always want to just honor my mom uh, today, so uh, thank you. Um, it's always good to be here and actually have the opportunity to speak here at the uh, Community America Center because it's an opportunity for us to be able to share our own message of how we want to uh, talk about what we want to share with, with other people. And so we always have an idea, like, you know, like a couple of months in advance of when we're going to be speaking. And I, you know, knew I was going to be, you know, you know, speaking on Mother's Day. And but I, for some reason, I was having a hard time was figuring out exactly what I wanted to talk about. Because normally I get um, guidance, I get some kind of like intuition, like, okay, this is what I want to uh, focus on. And so I usually get that pretty quickly, but for some reason it took um, quite a while this time to get to that point. And then it wasn't until um, uh, one of the classes that, you know, Reverend um, Peter Teach, he facilitates the um, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and beyond um, discussion group that we um, have here on Wednesday night. And so this one particular uh, Wednesday night, it was myself, Reverend Les, and Reverend um, Peter. Uh, and so for that night, it, at least for me, I felt it was a very powerful night. Uh, it was the, one of the nights that we um, actually really did focus on uh, LGBT issues at that uh, time, and it was so powerful. And I found myself by the end, I was like, wow, acceptance. That is what I want to talk about, because I recognize and am aware of the process that a lot of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community go through of, you know, coming out and what is that like about learning how to actually accept ourselves. And so that discussion that night just really, really just resonated with me and just made me realize of how important it is. Because um, I recognize and I, you know, understand that it's not always easy, you know, to realize that in your mind, that you feel like that you're different. Because the way society teaches us or tells us that we are. And so it finds it challenging a lot of time for us to actually to accept who we are, no matter what. And that night, and that discussion made me realize how important it is for me to not forget that. Because I've been out for so long that I sometimes forget what that process is for individuals who may just now be, you know, coming out and going through their own process and their own acceptance uh, regarding that aspect of it. And so the Course tells us this. The fact that God is love does not require belief, but it does require acceptance. What a powerful thing to be able to understand and to recognize. I've been inspired by a lot of things in my life. And just recently, one of the more important things that I find myself very much inspired by actually is the transgender community. And the reason why I am inspired by the transgender community, because I believe and I feel that they are actually teaching us what acceptance is really about. And that has been such a powerful message that we all forget. It's a community who struggled with their own gender identity and trying to find their own place and be able to allow themselves to come out and to be able to embrace that and accept that no matter what society is saying. And one of the other things that I truly appreciate and value about it is the fact of how some of the, uh, the transgender community believe in neutrality. It is not about labeling whether you are a male or a female. 
It is using terms that is a lot more neutral, like they or them. That is a wonderful gift that I believe that we're getting and that they are actually able to be able to accept that. That's their acceptance. And to have the courage to be able to let people know that's how they want to be identified as. I'm aware that there are people who want to still call them by what they appear of how they look like. But you know what, folks? That is not right. They have every right to accept who they are and to be able to let people know this is how I want to be identified as. That is confidence in yourself. That is a part, in my mind, of what acceptance truly is, of every aspect of who we are. I know for me, I continue to go through my own struggles of figuring out how I'm going to accept every aspect of myself. It's not always easy, but I do know and I do recognize the fact that since I've been part of The Course of Miracles, it has helped and it has inspired me to look even more deeper in the areas that I feel, that I believe, that I need to continue to work on to be able to embrace and to be able to accept all the aspects of me. It is indeed possible for you to deny facts, although it is impossible for you to change them. It is indeed possible for you to deny facts, although it is impossible for you to change them. Hmm. Beautiful quote from the Course. It is an incredible reminder that yes, the fact is we live in a world that discriminate. That is the fact. We cannot deny that. That is the way this world is set up. The thing is, though, each and every one of us can figure out a way how to change that. We may not be able to change everyone, but by allowing ourselves to truly embrace and accept who we are, people will pick up on that. That's our model. And that's how things starts to change. So yes, it says impossible to change them. I don't think so. It is not impossible. Because the thing is, once we change ourselves, that's how we go about changing other things. And for me, that's what I'm continuing to strive for and continue to work towards. The other thing that I appreciate when I you know, think about um, change and how things are not impossible, I really, really appreciate some of the um, women here in our congregation who, for them, are able to want to change the pronoun when they're reading The Course of Miracles. I know some people may feel that that's about separation or that's not the proper way to, think, to do, but when you think about it, they are accepting who they are. It's their experience. It's where they're coming from. And we, when we are able to do that, to experience what our purpose is, what our role is, then you know what? That's all right. Because it may appear to be separation, but actually what it is, it is starting to heal each and every one of us in ways that we never thought possible because they're coming from their experience. And when people come from their experience and we see how they are accepting themselves, then we are able to look at our own selves and see where we need to go with that. <coughs> and I recognize, at least for me, that sometimes that can be a challenge. To trust me, I have my own thoughts and opinions of how I believe that things should go. <laughs> you know, which is usually my way, but... <laughs> But I'm learning how to take a step back and not do that. And to really pay attention to the role not only of myself, but everyone who I interact with. 
that is, in my mind, the route that we need to start going, to need to start to embrace and really, really, truly believe in. I know, at least for me, being part of the LGBT community, that's what it's about, of us accepting and processing everything that we go through. And the thing is, it's not about us accepting ourselves, but also feeling like we need to be accepted in our own community. Because as, well, at least as I know, you know, the LGBT community also has a lot of racism, a lot of transphobia, a lot of bisexual phobia that exists within the community. And so how do we, and straight phobia and all that aspect of it, and how do we <laughs> allow ourselves to accept who we are when we want to be part of a community who doesn't completely accept all of us. All of these little different obstacles comes into play. <coughs> but the thing is, when we accept our true purpose of who we truly are and actually love ourselves, it really doesn't matter what they think because we are being true to ourselves. And to me, that is the gift that we have to give to us, to really trust that and believe in that and embrace that as much as we possibly can. And that is something that I know that I would continue to work towards, to own who I am, no matter what others may think. Because when we get to that point, just imagine what we can do in this world this world of a lot of racism, homophobia, sexism, classism. This list can go on and on and on. But when we accept that and realize what we can do to help change our mind and our perceptions of how we see it, then that's when things start to evolve. And in my mind, that is when things start to change. If you hold your hands over your eyes, you will not see because you are interfering with the laws of seeing. If you hold your hands over your eyes, you will not see because you are interfering with the laws of seeing. Let's just think about how often we find ourselves covering our own eyes because we don't want to see the truth. Mm. I know I've done that many times. And I think part of the reason for that is my own fears. I am allowing my fears to get in my way to see what is actually out there. To see the beauty that actually exists in this world. But we become blind to that when we're covering our eyes and we're not seeing our true nature. Once we start seeing that and believing that and accepting that, it's remarkable. And the thing is, it's not about just accepting all the wonderful things that exist within us. It's also accepting to realize that, guess what? We're not perfect. This world that we are in is not perfect. I'm not perfect. And guess what? That's all right. I think, though, so much, we get so much pressure, and we feel like that we have to do the best at every single thing that we forget that by not being perfect, guess what? We are learning. We are learning each time that we feel like something was not right, or something that we did or said was not the right way, and then guess what? We can correct that. We can move forward, and we can be okay of accepting the old aspect of us that is not perfect. I know that it's hard for me. I know that's always a struggle to be able to get to that point, to be okay with, you know what? I have flaws, that's okay. Especially as a course student. 
Because mm. in my mind, I want to beat myself up because I've been studying the Course for so long, I feel like I shouldn't have this already. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realize, it's like, you know what? I don't. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. No matter how many years we have practiced this incredible principle, it's okay. And I do not have to continue to beat myself up for it when I make mistakes. When I'm not in that frame of mind of believing and accepting of what my role and my purpose is in this world that we are in. And not to beat myself up over that. I'm getting better at it. Still have, have some work to do. But I'm fortunate. And I know and I have the awareness that I will be able to get to the point someday where I will be able to accept every aspect of who I am and every aspect of who everyone you are yourselves as well. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, everyone must remember the will of God because ultimately, everyone must recognize himself. You know, one of the things that I realized and that I had to, you know, recognize, and specifically regarding acceptance, is as a lot of you guys know, I work for the San Francisco Department of Public Health, and I've been there for many years, let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> and during those years, you know, I've, you know, been doing a lot of work in the HIV community, uh, specifically, you know, work, you know, in the um, Black African American community, more specifically, the, um, black african-american gay community uh regarding you know hiv and it's been you know incredible work but i you know still recall when i first was asked to shift my role and to do more work in the um black african-american community you know i had mixed feelings regarding that you know i was feeling somewhat resentful because i felt like the only reason why they wanted me to do it was because i was part of the community and they didn't feel like anyone else can so it's like this whole token thing came in, in my mind is it's all this stuff you know, entered my mind, you know, regarding that aspect of it. And so, you know, I was becoming, you know, somewhat, you know, upset about that, you know, regarding that. And, but then, you know, I learned to accept and realize the important work that we are doing and how important it was for me to be part of that. And one of the things during that time period, I was able to bridge the gap between our community-based organizations and the Central Department of Public Health. Because a lot of times there was rift. There was distrust, but I was able to bring that together and to have more trust from my community and Department of Public Health. And that's a wonderful thing. And the reason I was able to do that because I allowed myself to accept what my role and purpose was at that time. It took a lot of process to be able to do that. And I recognize that the amazing work that we've been doing because of that, but also the amazing friendship and family that I developed because of that work. And so things did get better and I became more you know, accepting. But then as usual, things always happen mm -hmm. and then you become resentful again. Mm -hmm. And you regret having to go to you know, work. And for me, as some of you guys know, one of my biggest struggles that I was having at my job had a lot to do with the fact of my classification. Because I've been doing a lot of work outside of my classification and the city takes forever to get you in your proper classification. But yet they continue to have you do these you know, higher work you know, regarding that. And then I was watching people who came in after me to get in their proper classification. And so I had a lot of this resentment, a lot of this anger, and then a lot of this, you know, hate, you know, happening. And then it took me a while to be able to accept that because I felt like I'm doing good work for the community, but then yet I was having all these issues with my job. And I had to take a moment and to really process what my purpose and role is. And the truth of the matter is, my purpose and my role is to do an amazing work in my community that means a lot to me. It is so important for me to make sure that my community, which is my black African American community, does not have to deal with health disparities anymore. Does not have to worry about having a high rate of HIV or all these other things that exist. And to be able to come from that from a perspective of love and healing that's what my role is, and that's what my passion is. And when I got to the point to be able to accept that and to be okay with that, it's allowed me to do more incredible work. And the thing is, in that process, it made me realize that my hesitation 
at first to be involved with this had to do with my own doubt, my own fear of feeling like my own community was not going to accept me and that I may do them wrong. It was my own stuff. But as we know, things work in mysterious ways and it is allowing me to embrace, to accept that my role, my leadership is, as part of the Department of Public Health, is to make sure my community is being taken care of. Yes, I trust down the road I will get in my proper classification, but in the meantime, I don't have to let down a community that means so much to me in such a level that is incredible, and that's all right. And the big lesson for me is to learn is I don't have to be perfect at it. And that's all right. I'm going to make mistakes in this role. There's going to be people in my own community who's going to probably resent me or hate the things that I have to say. But you know what? That's all right. The reason why it's all right, because I know I'm coming from a level of love, a level of healing a community that has experienced so much trauma in so many ways that my part is helping that, facilitating that process, being able to embrace it in a way that I've never done before. I have to tell you, it was hard to accept that. It's still hard. It's not, I'm not, I still have my doubts. I still wonder if this is the path that I'm supposed to go in. But the Spirit continues to put me in that direction. And I know that is what I have to do. I am so grateful and appreciative of understanding what acceptance is about, no matter where we are in our lives, and to embrace it, to be able to know when we are truly accepting of who we are, every aspect of us, it is a wonderful, powerful thing that we will be continue to put out into this world because that's who we are. We love ourselves, we accept every aspect of us, no matter what. And that's my talk. Thank you.